السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ويلكم باك ويز نيو ليكشر ويز اكريديتد لابوراتوري ان ذس ليكشر وي ويل اكسبلين تو وايز تو كوانتيفاي ذا اماونت اوف يور تارجت انالايتس ستاندرد اديشن اند انترنال ستاندردز اند وات از ذا ديفرنس بيتوين بوث اوف ذيم But before we start, don't forget to subscribe my channel and go through all videos in this channel because we have more than 40 videos in this field. First, I will explain standard addition method to quantify the amount or concentration of your target analytes in the sample. From the name, standard addition is addition of a known quantity or concentration of a standard of the same analyte present in the sample. If you analyze sample and you go to peak in a specific retention time, and you want to confirm that this peak is related to your target analyte, not any other interfering element. In this case, you will make standard addition. You will add a known concentration of a standard of the same analyte. And if this peak enhances by the same concentration, in this case, this is your target analyte, not any other interfering element. I have discussed this before in selectivity lecture. I will keep the link of this lecture down this video. So standard addition method used to confirm if the peak detected by your instrument related to your target analyte or not. By addition of a known amount or concentration of a standard of the same analyte to this sample. As in this example, if you analyze sample and you detect this peak, the instrument detect this peak, and you have a doubt if this peak related to your target analyte or not. The concentration of area under this peak was 5 BBB. If you add another 5 BBB of a standard of the same analyte that you analyze, if the result became 10 BBB, so this is confirmed, this is your target analyte. But if the result was not 10 BBB, was 5 BBB as example, in this case, this is, this is not your target analyte. And mainly, standard addition used to quantify the concentration of unknown target analytes. If you analyze sample containing your target analyte, but with unknown concentration Xi, and you add a known concentration of a standard of the same analyte, which is Cs, concentration of a standard of the same analyte, so the final concentration in this sample will be equal to this concentration of target analyte, which is unknown, plus the concentration of standard added to this sample. So from this equation, we can know the concentration of unknown. Concentration of unknown equal to the final concentration minus concentration of standard of the same analyte. If you add as example 10 BBB, concentration of standard added, and you got final concentration 15 BBB. So this will be 15 minus 10, so concentration of unknown will be 5 BBB. And here is the formal equation for standard addition method, which used to quantify the concentration of unknown target analyte in the sample. Xi, which is concentration of unknown target analyte in the sample, divided by Xf, which is the final concentration of this analyte in the sample after addition of a standard, plus SF, which is the final concentration of a standard in the mixture, equal to current signal of this unknown target analyte. We can take as example the area under the peak, area of unknown target analyte, divided by area of mixture, target analyte plus the standard added to the sample. So we can quantify the concentration of unknown target analyte by this equation, standard addition equation. First, we will calculate, quantify XF concentration, final concentration, final concentration of this target analyte after addition of standard, which is equal to XI concentration of unknown, multiplied to the uh, volume of the sample, volume of the sample before addition of a standard, volume of the sample before addition of a standard, divided by the volume of sample after addition of a standard, which is the final volume. And we can calculate also, S F from this equation S I, which is initial concentration of a standard added, only the standard added to this sample, 
multiply to Bs, which is the full volume of standard added to this sample divided by also the final volume. And from these equations, we can quantify the unknown, the concentration of unknown target analyte. And we, let's take example about this equation. In this example, we want to quantify vitamin C in 15 orange sample using electrochemical method. And we got this current signal 1.78. After addition of 0.4 ml of 0.279 molar vitamin C standard of the same analyte, we got this signal. So first we will calculate quantify XF, which is the final concentration of this analyte after addition of the standard equal to concentration of unknown vitamin C multiplied to volume of uh, analyte Volume of, analyte, volume of the sample before addition of the standard divided by the final volume equal to unknown concentration multiplied to 50 ml volume of the sample before addition of the standard divided by the final volume 50.4 ml then we will calculate SF which is equal to concentration of standard added multiplied to volume of standard added divided by the final volume we have Concentration of standard added molar, 0.279 molar, multiplied to 0.4 ml from the standard added to this volume 50 ml, so the final volume 50.4 ml, so equal to 0.0021 molar. And then we will use the standard equation, standard addition equation, as we said before in this equation, equal to concentration of unknown target analyte divided by XF, which is equal to concentration of unknown multiplied to 50 ml divided by 50.4 ml plus 0 0.0021, which is XS as we can SF, sorry, SF as we calculated here, equal to this current signal. This is the response that you will get from your instrument. Whatever the response, whatever your method, or whatever your instrument used, you will get response. This is your response, response for these concentrations. This the response from concentration of unknown target analyte divided by the response from the after addition of the standard mixture, mixture, mixture of the standard plus the concentration of unknown target analyte. So here we have only XI unknown, but all of them now they, we have all the, the the results except only the concentration of unknown. So concentration of unknown will be equal to 0 0.002. For molar. So using this equation, standard standard addition equation, we can quantify the concentration of unknown target analyte in the sample. Another very important point related to standard addition matrix matching calibration curve. If you want to prepare your calibration curve, but on the matrix itself, not on the solvent, to remove any matrix effect. As example here, prepare 1, 5, 10, 25, 50, and 100 BBB on your sample, from your compound. So you will go for the higher concentrations like 150 and 25. You will start by them, 100 BB. And you will take from the sample in this method, two grams from the sample as example. So 100 BB in two gram sample from one PPM standard, you want 100 microliter. 100 micro, you will add 100 microliter from one PPM on the sample on the sample. 50 BBB, it will be 50 microliter. 25 BBB, it will be 25 microliter. And these standards, it will take all extraction steps. You will add them from the beginning of your method extraction. And then, lower concentrations you can prepare lower concentration at the end of extraction from these concentrations from these standards 100 50 25 10 bbb as example you will prepare in one ml hplc vial from 100 bbb so you need 100 microliter from you will take from this standard that you prepared then 5 bbb one ml from 50 BBB, you need 100 microliter also from 50 BBB, and one BBB, same, you will prepare from 10 BBB. So 
you can prepare all of your all, all of your standards on the sample itself. You will prepare higher concentrations on the sample from the beginning of your extraction steps. For, for it will take all extraction steps, and then you will prepare lower concentrations from these standards. This is matrix matrix calibration curve. Now the main subject of this lecture, which is internal standard. And we want to know the difference between standard addition and internal standard. Both of them used to quantify the concentration of unknown target amyloid in the sample. But standard addition, you want to add known amount of concentration of a standard of the same amyloid to the sample. But internal standard, you will add known concentration of a standard of different amyloid to the sample and planks and calibration standards, but by the same amount to all of them. And we should know that quantitative analysis carried out using either external or internal standard. For external standards, calibration curves made by measuring different known concentration of your target analytes. You will prepare different concentration of your target analytes and you will run on the instruments. First, you need to prepare different concentration of standards of your target analytes, as example 1, 5, 10, 25, 50 BBB, and then you will run these standards on the instrument to get the response by detector. Response, as example area under peak, is proportional to the concentration of these standards. Then the relation between area under peak, which is the response, and the concentration here will be drawn on this calibration curve, and slope equal to this area divided by x, concentration of this target. I mean, this is your calibration curve by using external standard. But internal standard is a standard of different species or chemical that added in a constant amount to blanks, samples, and calibration standards. So internal standard has a different chemical than the analyte of interest and should not react or interfere with the analyte of interest also should not contain any impurities that may react with the analyte of interest. Also samples analyzed by the use of internal standard should not contain this internal standard or this substance in their composition so that the added standard is the only source of that standard and also should be totally separated in the chromatogram from target analyte. In the chromatogram, there will be peak for internal standard and another peak but separated from that internal standard for the analyte, analyte of interest and this for internal standard and here resolution between these two peaks very high. Also selected internal standard should be very constant and cannot be changed or affected from preparation up to run using the instrument. But when do we need to add internal standard? Internal standard can compensate for both random and systematic error. For example, if there are instrument fluctuations that will cause random error in the measurement, such as flow rate change, injection volume change, whatever problem that will make fluctuation to the results, to the measurement, these fluctuations expected to be the same for internal standard and the analyte, because internal standard already added to blanks, samples, and calibration standards from preparation to run. So any change will be for internal standard and the analyte of interest, same. So response factor will not also change, does not change. Will stay the same response factor, which is the ratio of response between the analyte of interest and the internal standard. From this equation, we can calculate response factor. Area of analyte divided by concentration of analyte equal to response factor multiplied to area of internal standard divided by concentration of internal standard. Also, internal standard can compensate for systematic errors, such as matrix effect. If there is matrix effect, this effect will be for both of them, internal standard and the analyte of interest, and thus also response factor stays the same. So by having internal standard inside the mixture, inside blank samples and calibration standards, any problem any problem from preparation up to run samples and the standards and blanks 
That will be for both of them, for analyte and the internal standard, and thus response factor will stay the same. And as we said in the beginning of this lecture, that standard addition and the internal standard used to quantify the concentration of unknown target analyte in the sample. In case of inter internal standard also, as in this example, if you have two solutions, first solution contain concentration of analyte was 52.4 nanomolar, and the area we got the response was 0.644. The internal standard added was 38.9, and the area we got was equal to 1 for the internal standard. For the second solution contained, the concentration of analyte was unknown, and the area or response was 1.093. Internal standard added was 742 nanomolar, and the area we got was equal to 1. From the first solution, we have all values. So we can calculate response factor from the first solution. And once we calculated the response factor, we can use this response factor to calculate any concentration for the unknown target analytes in any sample after that. As here, this equation, uh, area of the analyte divided by in the solution one, divided by concentration of analyte in the solution one, equal to response factor multiply to area of internal standard divided by concentration of internal standard that for solution one. So we have all these values, we can calculate response factor which is equal to 0.478. We can use this response factor to calculate the concentration of unknown target analyte in this sample. 1.093 area of analyte divided by the concentration of unknown target analyte in this sample in the solution, equal to response factor that we got from solution one multiplied to this. So we have only this concentration of unknown. So we can get the concentration of unknown target analyte by calculation at the beginning response factor. And as we said before, if there is any problem during ground form preparation to run, that will be same for internal standard and the analyte of interest, so the response factor will stay the same, so the result for unknown concentrations, for unknown target analytes, will not be affected. For calibration standards, as we said, that internal standard will be added by the same amount to all calibration standards. And then we will run these standards on the instrument, we will go this calibration curve. But the response in this case will be equal to A, area of analyte divided by the area of internal standard. And the concentration in this case will equal to concentration of analyte divided by concentration of internal standard. And slope here will be equal to area, as in this response, divided by concentration area of analyte divided by area of internal standard divided by concentration of analyte divided by concentration of internal standard. And that slope will be equal to response factor. Once we calculated the response factor, we can use it to calculate the, the concentration of unknown target analytes after that in the samples. And also internal standard will be added to blanks and samples by the same amount that we add also for calibration standards. And we will get this chromatogram. This peak will be for internal standard and will be totally separated from the analyte of interest. And then we can calculate the concentration of analyte, which is equal to from this equation also that we mentioned before, which is equal to area of analyte divided by the area of internal standard divided by the response factor multiplied to the concentration of internal standard. As here, same like in this equation, area of analyte divided by concentration of analyte equal to response factor multiplied to area of internal standard divided by concentration of internal standard. So we can calculate the concentration of unknown target analyte in the samples. Let's clarify internal standard by this example, analysis of caffeine in coffee sample using gas chromatography. And you should be able to select the most suitable internal standard to analyze your samples. Here we selected adenine. And you should ensure that this internal standard used is not natively present in the sample. So that the only source of this internal standard is the known concentration you have. Then you will create your calibration curve using caffeine and adenine standard and you will create this calibration. This calibration will be uh, created 
that will be calculated the slope area of uh, analyte divided by area of internal standard divided by concentration of analyte divided by concentration of internal standard and this slope equal to response factor once you calculate the response factor you can calculate the unknown concent the concentration of unknown analyte in all samples after that from this equation and to prepare your calibration standard you should prepare at the beginning stock solution from caffeine and adenine standard weight at the beginning 100 milligram adenine and dissolve in 50 ml dimethyl sulfoxide so 100 milligram in 50 ml dimethyl sulfoxide in 1 ml it will be 2 milligram so you have 2 milligram per ml adenine as a stock solution from caffeine you should weigh 100 milligram caffeine and dissolve in 25 ml methanol so you have 4 milligram per ml caffeine standard as a stock solution then you will prepare your calibration standards from these two solutions 0.2.51 2 BBB caffeine and add 0.2 ml adenine to each standard then you will run your calibration curve your calibration standards and you will get your calibration curve then you will calculate response factor that will be used to calculate the concentration of unknown in the sample for sample preparation you will wait 2 grams from the sample as example then you will dissolve in 20 ml methanol and filter the sample then you will transfer 1 ml from the extract to HPLC vial and you will add to each vial 0.2 ml from adenine standard in this example you add internal standard after extraction steps sometimes you need to add internal standard before evaporation or before any step that will affect on your analyte so because the effect should be constant for both of them for the analyte and the internal cell so you should take care from this point that was the end of this lecture today see you in the next time inshallah assalamu alaikum